Hey everybody, get excited because this month's Make and Take is all about learning how to create a Bitmoji classroom. This video will walk you through the process of creating your own Bitmoji classroom and share some creative ideas on how you can use it in your teaching. My name is Rebecca Simons and welcome to the Educate community. Bitmoji classrooms were all the rage during the COVID-19 pandemic, and while some of the hype around them has died down, I feel like they still have a valuable place in the classroom. Not only are they a great way to organize your instructional materials, but it allows you to present them in an attractive, fun way. They're also great for helping foster engagement and promoting independence among your students, especially your younger learners. So let's kick things off by exploring some creative ways you can incorporate a Bitmoji Classroom into your teaching. Idea number one is to use your Bitmoji scene as a daily agenda slide. This type of virtual space serves as a combination of a daily agenda and a resource hub with a rundown of the day's assignments, access to lesson resources, and direct links to Google Classroom assignments. Additionally, you could use this space to highlight learning objectives, incorporate a timer for time management, and offer enrichment opportunities for early finishers. Now, when I was teaching, I would project my agenda slide on my screen because it gave me easy access to all the materials I would need during my lesson, but I would also post a link in Google Classroom so that my students could use these links as well. Idea number two is to use your virtual classroom as a class resource hub. This idea is really similar to number one, except the focus is on providing access to long-term resources rather than day-to-day -day materials. This would include items such as your syllabus, commonly used websites, anchor charts, or any other resource that your students routinely access. So as you can see here, I've chosen to display icons for IXL and Common Lit, and all students would have to do is click on them and it would take them directly to the site. Idea number three is to create a topic-based space. Bitmoji classrooms can be transformed into a space where students can dynamically engage with a topic or subject area. Now, as a former reading teacher, I'm partial to the idea of creating a virtual library. You could include links to book trailers or book talks, involve your students in creating book recommendations and reviews, provide links to read-alouds, e-versions of books, or even student-created books through apps like Book Creator. Additionally, this is a great way to incorporate author spotlights where you can link to author's interviews, quotes, and some of their most famous works. Idea number four is to use your Bitmoji scene as a Google Meet or a Zoom waiting screen. Bitmoji classrooms can serve as a great waiting screen because it provides a space to make announcements and post reminders for your students. It's also a simple way to add a personal touch to your online classes and create a warm, friendly environment. Hopefully one of these ideas resonated with you and got some of those creative juices flowing. Next up, I'm going to be sharing tips and tricks for creating your own virtual classroom. So the first thing you'll need to do, unless you already have one, is create a Bitmoji. Now, a Bitmoji is a cartoon avatar of yourself, like my example here. You, you can create your avatar through the website bitmoji.com or the Bitmoji app on your phone. One of the questions I most frequently get is, do I have to have a Snapchat account to create a Bitmoji? And the answer to that is no. Once you've created your avatar, the easiest way to add your Bitmoji to things is through the Bitmoji Chrome extension. This extension allows you to quickly search for different stickers, then right click to copy and paste them anywhere. This extension can be added through the Chrome Web Store. I'll add the link to the extension in the video description below. 
All right, now that you've got a Bitmoji, you're ready to start designing your virtual scene. We're going to be using the platforms Canva and Google Slides today. The first step is to create a new slide deck by typing slides.new into the Omni box. This deck will house our finished product. How you plan on using your Bitmoji Classroom will determine your canvas size. For example, if you're planning on using it as an agenda or a resource hub, then this default canvas size is perfect. If you're wanting to design a Bitmoji scene for a Google Classroom or a Google Form header, you'll want to change your canvas size to 1600 by 400 pixels. To change your canvas size, click File, Page Setup, then click the drop down arrow and select Custom. You'll set your unit of measurement to pixels, then change the size to 1600 by 400. Once you've determined how you're going to be using your scene, you're going to want to start collecting images. Now, there are a couple different ways we can go about finding images. The first option is to use the image search within slides. You can access the image search by clicking on the Explorer icon in the bottom right hand corner or by selecting Insert, Image, Search the Web. The second option is to go to Google and perform an image search. With both of these options, you're going to need to be conscious of the image copyright status. Images with a Creative Commons license are a good choice, but they still require attribution. An easy way to make sure that your image has a Creative Commons license is by clicking on Tools under Google Images, Usage Rights, Creative Commons license. This will narrow down your search results to any images that have been flagged for reuse with attribution. If you're pulling your images from Google, adding the word transparent to your search is an easy way to search for images without a background. If you do want to use an image that has a background, you can use the site remove.bg to remove it. To get started, pull up the site remove.bg in your browser, then upload the image or drag and drop into the window. The site will automatically process the image and remove the background. The site is completely free and doesn't require you to set up an account to use it. Once your image is done, all you need to do is hit download, then you can drag and drop it into your slide deck. The third option, which is the one I'll be using today, is to create a free Canva for Educators account and use their images to create your Bitmoji Classroom. If you don't already have an account, type in canva.com backslash education. Here you can register for a free educator account, which is the same as having access to a Canva Pro account. You can also set your students up with accounts as well. The reason I recommend using Canva is because all of their images can be used for free for commercial and non-commercial use, which means there aren't the licensing concerns you would run into if you were searching for an image on Google. Today, we're gonna cover two different ways to approach designing a Bitmoji scene in Canva. And option number one is to utilize Canva's pre-created Bitmoji classroom templates. If you haven't taken time to explore Canva's pre-made templates, it is well worth the time. To get started, type the word Bitmoji into the search field and hit enter. You can then choose from any of the available templates, which even includes a blank scene. Now, almost everything in the templates is customizable, so don't get too hung up on the color scheme or even the type of furniture. Once you find a scene that you like, click on it, then click Customize this template. When you click on the scene, you'll see color boxes along the top menu. Click on any of these to change the color of different elements in the room. You can also click on individual objects and change the color of them as well. If you don't like a particular image, click on it to select and press delete. You can then click on the elements menu and use the search field to find new images that are more to your taste. For example, if I wanted a different plant, I might search indoor plants. 
Then I could click to insert an image and use the circles in the corner to resize. Here's an example of how you can change up the scene I just selected in about five to 10 minutes. The second option is to create your scene completely from scratch. From the Canva home screen, I'm going to click Create Design, then select Presentation. Next, I'm going to click on the Elements menu and type Wall Floor into the search field. I usually have the most success under Photos, so I'm going to click See All. The most important part is to find a floor that you like. It's really easy to change the wall because it's simply a rectangle. Once you find an image you like, click to add it to your canvas, then click one of the circles in the corner to proportionally enlarge the image until it fills the entire canvas. You can move the image around until you're happy with the amount of floor that's showing. I personally like to have most of the canvas taken up by the wall. Now, if you don't like the color of the wall, you can create a new wall by inserting a rectangle shape or an image. To add a rectangle, begin by clicking on your canvas, then press the letter R on your keyboard. This is the quick add shortcut for a rectangle in Canva. Now I'm going to move my shape over to the far left corner of my canvas, then enlarge it until it covers all of the wall. Now I can click on the color icon in the menu bar and select a new wall color. I can select from one of the default colors that are available, or I can use the plus button to select a custom color. The plus button gives you the ability to use hex codes to select a specific color, or you can use the eyedropper to select a color from an image. For example, if I really liked the shade of green, I could use my eyedropper to select it. Now, instead of a solid wall color, you could also use a pattern image to create a wallpaper effect. To find pattern images, make sure you're under elements, then type a term into the search field. For example, I really like lemons, so I might use a lemon wallpaper in the bottom half of my wall. Once my image has been added, I'm going to double click to access the crop feature, and I'm going to limit how much of the image I can see. At this time, you're going to want to add any additional objects that are going to be part of your scene's backdrop. For example, if I know I'm going to use this scene as an agenda, I might want to go ahead and add a whiteboard. I could also add room decor like plants, lights, computers, etc. Just make sure not to add any elements that you want students to be able to interact with at this time. We'll add all the interactive elements when we get to Google Slides. Now, as you're adding images, you can layer them to provide depth to the scene. For example, right now, my whiteboard is on top of my chair. I want to make it appear that the whiteboard is behind the chair. To do this, I can right click on the image and select bring to front. These are known as layers, and it allows me to manipulate the order in which my objects are appearing in the scene. Once you're happy with your scene, download it by clicking on Share, Download. If you have multiple scenes, like my example here, then you'll use the checkboxes under Select Pages to identify which scenes you want to download. Make sure your file type is PNG or JPEG then click download. Next, you're going to head back over to your slide deck and select a blank slide. Click on the background button in the formatting menu, then select choose image and upload your scene from your downloads folder. At this point, you can begin to add your Bitmoji and any interactive elements. To add my Bitmoji, I'm going to click on the Bitmoji Chrome extension, then type in the search term Pose. This will give me Bitmoji stickers where I'm not saying anything and don't have a background. Once I find one I like, I can right-click on it to copy, then right-click on my slide to paste. 
If your Bitmoji isn't facing the right direction, right click on the image, then select Rotate Flip Horizontally. Because we built the entire scene in Canva and downloaded it as an image, nothing in my scene is movable. If you wanted to rearrange anything in your scene, you would have to go back to the original in Canva, make your changes, re-download the image, and re-upload it to Google Slides. So if you're the kind of person who doesn't like to be tied down, or you like to feng shui your virtual space frequently, here's my suggestion. Build your backdrop with the bare minimum like this example here. Then add all the images you want to use to build your scene to another slide in Canva. You wanna make sure that there's plenty of white space around each image. Now, when you go to download, just like last time, you'll go to share, download, PNG, but this time you wanna check transparent background. I like to add all my images to a blank slide at the end of my deck, and then I can use the crop tool to start breaking them apart. To break them apart, start by double clicking on the image, then use these small black lines to isolate one of the images. Double click or press enter to apply the crop mask. Now you can move the image around by itself and resize to your liking. When I want to add it to my scene, all I have to do is copy and paste. Now this is only one of the images I brought in, so we need to continue to isolate each of them. To do this, I'm going to click on the image, then press Control D. Double click to access the crop tool, then click and drag to readjust which part of the image is visible and adjust the crop mask accordingly. This method takes a little more time than just building everything directly in Canva, but the benefit is that everything is movable versus my first scene where I would have to go back to Canva and re-download to make any adjustments. Now you can begin adding the content that you're going to change on a regular basis and all the links to make your classroom interactive. The first one is going to be where I can type the date, and the second one is going to be where I could add my objective or agenda for the day. I like to provide links for everything we're going to be doing in class for a number of reasons. Uh, one, it gives me easy access to everything while I'm teaching. Two, if anyone's absent, I can direct them to this deck in Google Classroom, and it gives them a rundown of everything we did. Three, it helps me to be more efficient with my class time because my students can quickly access the materials they need from one location. You can add links to other slides within your deck, other Google files, external websites, and specific Google Classroom assignments. To add a link to something, you're going to select the word or image that you want to turn into a link. Then you can use the shortcut Control K the link icon in the toolbar or insert link. To link to another slide in your deck, you're going to click the drop down slides in this presentation, then click the desired slide. To link to an external resource, you'll simply copy and paste the URL of the site or the file within your Google Drive. To link to a specific assignment in Google Classroom, go to the Classwork tab, then click the More icon for the assignment and click Copy Link. This will allow you to link students directly to that assignment, which eliminates all the, where is that assignment? Now let's talk about how to make sure your Bitmoji Classroom is accessible for all learners. I am by no means an expert on accessibility. I am definitely still learning. It's a growth area for me, but here are a few ideas. Idea number one, add alt text. Alt text helps screen readers identify images on your slide. And this is especially important if you've created a resource hub with clickable links. To add alt text, select an image, right click and select alt text. 
Idea number two, have a clear organizational strategy. Unless you are using this scene as some kind of a scavenger hunt or a breakout room, consistently place your links in the same location. For example, I'm always going to have my agenda links listed here. Don't one day randomly turn your plant into a link and expect your students to know that it's there. Idea number three, add audio. Consider using a voice or screen recorder like Moat or Screencastify to record yourself navigating the slides. Uh, this is an easy way to teach students how to navigate if it's a virtual space and show them where to find everything. And it's also a great way to provide auditory directions for absent students or students who just need to go back and listen to things again. Idea number four, keep it simple. It's easy to feel like you need to include all the things in your Bitmoji classroom. However, when you're creating, try to stick to the mantra, less is more. When you visually clutter up the space or you have too many links, it can easily lead to your students feeling overwhelmed or things may not be utilized. All right, so you've created this amazing space. How do you share it? Regardless of what platform you decide to share your Bitmoji Classroom through, the best option for sharing is to publish your deck to the web. You can do this by going to File, Share, Publish to Web. Then share your deck using the Publish to Web link. Anytime someone opens your Bitmoji Classroom, it will automatically open in present mode. Another pro tip for sharing is to utilize the ability to skip slides. To skip a slide, right click on the slide in the film strip and select skip slide. Skipping slides allows you to build all of your slides into the same deck and hide the ones you don't want students to be able to see or navigate to. For example, even though I have 10 slides in this deck, when the deck is in present mode, my students can only see one slide, even if they're clicking around. I also like to hide slides so I can control how my students move through the deck. So even if a slide is hidden, you can still link to it. For example, on my agenda, I asked my students to complete a picture study. The only way for them to access the pictures is by clicking on the link in the agenda, which means they can't accidentally get to it by advancing the deck. Similarly, when it says that I want them to view this video, the only way to get through the video is by clicking the link in the agenda, even though all of these slides are built into my deck. Now, the great thing about Publish to Web is if you decide that you want a slide to be visible, all you have to do is right click and say unskip slide. Now, when I come back over to my deck that's been published to the web, if I click, it's automatically going to skip everything that was in between and automatically advance them to the Digital Citizenship Library. Well, that's all I've got for you today. I cannot wait to see your amazing Bitmoji scenes and hear about how you're using them in your classroom. I hope that you'll think about adding yours to our community slide deck so we can all celebrate how you are using EdTech in your classroom. Keep being amazing. And until next time, thank you for joining the Educate community.